Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titani Games, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up an object inspection system in your game. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. So to start, um, I am using 4.14 and the first person template here, uh, but this method should work for pretty much any uh, any type of game or engine version. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Edit, Project Settings, and go to Input, because we're going to add our own action mapping. Um, for our inspection button. So just click that little plus, go here, we'll type inspection. All right, and we'll change this to, you know, whatever key you want to use for inspecting. So we'll use the E key here. Um, if you're using like game pads, uh, maybe you'd want to use the game pad, um, I don't know, face button top maybe? Because I think it's already, the bottom one's already, yeah, the bottom one's already being used by jump. So I don't know, we'll just use the top one. Okay, so with that done, we're going to go find our uh, first person character and we're going to edit him, open him up. All right, so haven't done anything here yet. So let's just go ahead and um, we're going to do a couple things to the, um, to the character blueprint really quick. Okay, so go to the viewport and um, I think I already might have done it, but what you want to do is just adjust your uh, first person camera component here to be these values here. So a negative 20 on the X, um, 0 on the Y, and then about 65 on the Z. Now this is just what I have my project you know, set to for now. Um, you, They're just like, I just made them these values because they're easy to work with um, versus before I think they were like a bunch of random uh, kind of decimal point values. So I just like to work with nice values. So once you've done that, um, Next, what we'll do is we're going to add a new component. So we'll add a scene component. We are going to call this inspection location. Okay, and of course I spelled it wrong. So let me spell it correctly. Inspection, there we go. Okay, and what we're going to do with it is we're going to take it, drag it, and attach it to our first person camera component. Now the reason for this is because um, when we inspect things, right, we could be potentially like looking at the ground when we inspect it or looking up in the air or whatever. Um, so we always want the object to, um, the object that we're inspecting to be located relative to our camera, okay? So that's why we're attaching it. Next we're gonna take it and move it up to about um, his height. So we'll say, uh, we'll just zero out the Z. Now for the X, we're gonna go ahead and bump it out to about 100 or something. So it's kind of kind of out here a little ways past the gun so we don't have any clipping with um, anything else. Maybe 110. Okay, so compile and save that. All right, next we're gonna go to the event graph and we'll start coding our system. So since we added that input action uh, mapping, we can right click and say inspection and add our input action events inspection, okay? So the way we're going to do this is we're going to use um, what's called a line trace. Um, you know, this, whatever, if you have your own kind of interaction system kind of set up already, then, um, you know, just kind of incorporate that into uh, the rest of what we'll do. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll do a line trace by channel. Okay. Now we need to tell it where to start and where to end. All right. So to do that, we're going to take our first person camera and we are going to get his world location. And this will tell us where we want to start the trace. All right, next we're going to um, get his forward vector so that we can tell our, um, our line trace to uh, project forward, okay? Then we're gonna multiply it by float. And this float will be the distance um, into, you know, the distance forward that you want to look for an item to interact with. Okay, so we'll say something like, uh, maybe 250, all right? And then once you've done that, we'll say vector plus vector. And I'm just hold, gonna hold control and drag that down because I don't really like crossing nodes. So we'll do that, plug it into end, and there we go. So now we have our trace. Um, last thing, let's go ahead and change the trace visibility to camera because camera automatically um, is blocked by everything. So um, I just find that it usually works uh, better. Um, and then we'll change the draw debug to for duration just for now um, so that we can actually see the line trace in the game. Okay, 
So just to check really quick, oops, I don't know why it's not compiling, but just, all right, there we go. Now it compiled. Okay. So anyways, we'll just test really quick that it's working. So if I press E, you'll see that there's these little lines being drawn. All right. So that's perfect. That's what we want. Okay. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take this return value, which tells us if we hit something and we're going to do a branch um, because you know we only want to execute what comes next if we hit something. So then we're going to take our out hit value here and we're going to say break hit result so that we can get some information from the hit. And um, next what we need to do is we need to actually create a blueprint that we'll be able to um, kind of cast our hit actor to to tell us if we've hit an inspection object yet. So back in the content browser, let's go ahead and right click, create a blueprint class of type actor, and we'll just call this BP underscore inspection object. Okay, so we'll open this up. Now I'm gonna add a new component here, um, and I'm gonna add a static mesh, right? And then I'm gonna replace the root with it. Okay, so um, if you, you know, have, again, if you have your own inspection system, um, just kind of try to figure out how to work this in uh, with that, right? You just basically need to have some kind of uh, root component on an object that you can manipulate, okay? So, um, or on an actor that you can manipulate. So, we're going to go ahead and change this static mesh here to, uh, how about the cube? Because we'll be able to, um, you know, see that really easily, see the rotation happening. Um, so, Let's go ahead and scale it down actually to about 0.2, um, just so that it's just so that it's not you know so big and up in our face. Okay, so now we have our inspection object. Let's go back to our first person character, and we're going to take this hit actor and we are going to cast to uh, our BP inspection object. All right, perfect. So now if this succeeds, we're going to promote this to a variable. We're going to call this inspection object. All right. File and save that. Perfect. And then um, what we want to do is we want to get some information from him. So we'll say get actor location and we'll say get actor uh, rotation. Now if you wanted you could like get his transform and then only get these two values um, for what we're going to do next but this is just how I like to do it. Um, so any, anyways, what we'll do next is we'll take these return values and we'll promote them to a variable. We'll call this inspection object location. Okay, hook that up. Do the same thing here. Inspection object rotation. Okay, hook this up. All right, perfect. All right, so now we have the object stored as a reference so that we can you know access it later we also have its two kind of starting points which we will be able to use to kind of reset um, the object's position and rotation once we are um, done inspecting okay so what we'll do next then is um, we're going to create a boolean and probably should have done this first but it doesn't matter um, we'll create a boolean that we'll call is inspecting okay and is inspecting perfect and we'll go ahead and take this and set it and we'll set it to true uh, because if we've hit this object then you know we know that um, we want to start inspecting okay so now back here to the beginning we need to do a quick little branch here um, to check if we're already inspecting because if we are inspecting okay and sorry I'm going a little quick here sorry so I just take the variable here, drag it out and say get and plug it into the branch. Okay. Um, so basically if we are inspecting, um, then we don't want to be doing these line traces, right? So we only want the false, right? So as long as is inspecting is false, then we'll do the line traces. But if it's true, then later on we'll reset um, our inspection. Okay. So now next, what we're going to do is we are going to disable our character's movement so that we can't like run around while inspecting. Uh, so we'll take character movement and we'll say disable movement. All right. Next, we're going to create a timeline uh, that will allow us to kind of smoothly interpolate between um, the between the object's position and our inspection location. Okay, so we'll go ahead and say add timeline right there. We'll just call this 
object um, I don't know whatever I'll just call it object I don't even care um, so next we'll take uh, this disable movement here plug it into play all right and then let's go ahead and open up our timeline here so we're gonna change the length to about a value of one um, so you know this timeline its interpolation will take about one second and we'll add a float track for it okay and um, we'll call this track alpha all right so next if you hold shift and click you'll add a key okay and we're gonna take that key and set its time to zero and leave its value at zero and then we'll go to the end shift click change its time to one and its value to one okay then if you click these little buttons here you can frame up on it and now you can leave the interpolation as uh, linear but I'm going to change it to um, auto so if you just click each one of these keys you know by shift clicking and then right click you can select auto and it will create this kind of smooth curve line um, so that will make the interpolation a little a little more nice or a little nicer um, all right so now that we have that you'll see that it added the float track there so we have this alpha value that we can use so what we're gonna do with it is we're gonna do two uh, linear interpolations okay so we'll drag out and we'll type lerp and we're gonna do a lerp vector okay and we're also gonna do a lerp rotator All right. now for this rotator let's choose shortest path okay and now for um, now we just need to define the A and B for both of these. Now the A for our lerp, lerp vector is going to be you know, the starting point um, that we saved. So we'll take our inspection object location, we'll plug that in, okay, and then we'll do the same down here for this A. We'll take our object inspection rotation, plug that in. Uh, but now we need to define the B's, right? So where, where we want it to move to. Okay, so for the vector uh, lerp, we're going to take our inspection location from up here we're going to get his world location plug that in and there we go so now we've got this lerp perfect now we need to do um, kind of a similar thing uh, for the bottom one here but instead of using the inspection locations rotation we need to use our inspection object rotation so that's why we created um, a reference to it so that we can access it uh, later okay so we're going to go ahead and take this and we are going to look for get actor, oops, get actor rotation. Okay, so we get our actor's rotation. Plug this into B, and we're good to go. So next, what we need to do is uh, we need to take our inspection object, and we need to set its location and rotation. So we'll get this, and we'll say set actor location. All right, and then we'll also say set actor rotation now you could just use the set actor transform uh, function but I'm just doing it this way so you can easily uh, tell what I'm doing okay so next we'll take the value from the vector lerp plug it into new location and take the value from the rotator lerp plug it into new rotation and there we go okay so finally what we'll do is um, we'll just add the reverse part to this Okay, so once we press inspection again, right, um, we're going to take this true value, drag it out here, and we're going to say set is inspecting to false. And then we need to take our character movement, and we need to set his movement, um, excuse me, movement, why can I not spell today, movement mode um, to walking. Okay. And then take that, plug it into reverse, and there we go. So now if we want to try this out really quick, we can go back um, to our viewport here and let's add our inspection object. Okay, put it up here somewhere. And we'll go ahead and say play. And we'll go find it. And if we hit E, it'll kind of zoom up, right? And then if you hit E again, it'll go back. Alright, so here we go. Hit hit E, zooms in hit E again, it goes back. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we'll go ahead and add the rotation um, and pitch to our object so that we can actually you know, look around and actually inspect it. Um, but with that, thank you for watching. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one.